Okay. So you're a marketing guy, right? You and your and your uh, partner in crime are both from in the marketing background. How did you make this transition from marketing to movies? Well, I, well frankly, I'm going to ask you about the movies. Yeah, no. Fr frankly, what we did was honestly not transition. I mean, uh, we. We believe something that there, um, there's a quote from Alexander Rochenka, who was one of the founders of modern day advertising, was a Soviet guy that Lenin hired to basically create modern day advertising uh, for what was the first brand of the time, the Soviet Union. And he has this great quote, the work of art is the work plus the packaging. So for us, advertising and the movie itself are uh, one, they are they are two parts of the same thing. They are the yin and the yang, if you will. That uh, they are one experience that you that go together. They are go they they are fused together to make one experience. I guess you could say. So for us, advertising and making movies is on some level one activity that we ultimately don't want to transition from one thing to another with. We like to do both. We like to do all of it. Great. So Brandon, I I saw the trailer. It's great. Um, Thanks. I'm a very big fan of dark, dystopic bizarreness, so it immediately caught my eye. So tell me about this movie. Uh, well, it, it, it truly is a mind-bending, hallucinogenic, uh, dark journey through a world of control, uh, which I think is, is, is the world we live in today. It's a, it's a world... Uh, full of hidden forces that control who we are and control what we believe in, what we desire, and how we're sculpted, and what we do, and what we think, and all of that. So it's, it's, uh, it's a, pretty dark, uh, a pretty dark, exciting sci-fi thriller. How do the QR codes come into it? I know that's kind of like the central device you're using for the whole thing. So. Well, when you're criticizing advertising how better way to do it than to use app technology to <laughs> basically criticize app technology okay um we so like how, irony i mean honestly like the world is a very ironic place indeed at least is. i've always <laughs> felt like the uh, the truth the truth is a very ironic thing so usually it is usually it is um so the hero of your story why don't you tell me about him and and what his journey is without giving away too many spoilers. Well, the, the, the hero finds himself uh, embroiled in a global conspiracy to control uh, everything about who we are and finds that that conspiracy, as he goes deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole, if I could borrow a, uh, a, a very classic and wonderful thing, um, that, 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 that that rabbit hole goes down to a very, very dark and very sinister and shall we say, I hate the word supernatural, but to a, a place you would very much uh, never expect and is certainly not a place uh, that is of this earth, put it that way. So you use the term down the rabbit hole, so I have to ask, sure. is it sort of an anti, obviously it's, it's its own thing, but is it sort of in a sense an anti Alice in Wonderland or uh, an Alice in Wonderland idea on steroids? Sure, I mean, Alice in Wonderland meets Apocalypto. Yeah, I'm happy to say that. Good, sure. okay, yeah. that's a good tagline. Yeah, Good, sure. good. So um, this is something you wrote, you produced, you directed with your partner. Yeah. Um, and an, in, an indie film in the truest sense of the word. Um, yeah, we'd like to, honestly, we really try to think of it essentially as an autonomous film. We really okay. like the word autonomous for, for, for the reason that it, it really was produced uh, by only the two of us in a completely uh, in a completely freestanding way. We uh, did not have to rely on the prefab forms of financing that most all films are are made with these days, and uh, there were no active pressures working on our partner and I creatively to control the film other than our vision of it. Because again, we would never have made the film if we were not allowed those kind of freedoms. The whole point of making the film, uh, if the film in any way is a statement, is to exercise those kinds of freedoms mm -hmm. of creativity. And thank God we have uh, at least one distributor left in this country, Roadside Attractions, that's willing to support a vision like that and take it in a, in a wide theatrical release pattern uh, to a lot of people so that you can get eyeballs onto something like that. 
Right, um, and you've got some fairly big name actors, Max von Sydow, which is like, which is the name that pops out. I was like, whoa. Um, Jeff Tambor, Lily Sobieski. Um, what kind of budget are, were you working with for a movie like this? Well, I have to demure the actual number, but it, it's it's a it's it, it's a quite significant budget film. I mean, not 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 like the budgets that most independent films are usually strained with. It has. Uh, uh, a unique reality to it that it has several markets that are core to it, uh, including Russia. So it has a way, not unlike the way that Luc Besson uh, had uh, earlier on in the late 80s, early 90s, mm -hmm. uh, a, a second market or a first market in France. We okay. have a first market in Russia or a second market, however you want to say it. So we, we have some unique freedoms that come from making a story that has some content that has really powerful appeal to that particular culture and country. But in terms of those actors, those are people that we uh, went to because uh, we believed that they are, are actors who are truly invested in the characters that they portray. Uh, that they're people who design and create a character in, in a full 360 kind of a way that makes you completely believe in them. And uh, it was obviously uh, extremely exciting for us that, that, that Max actually read the script and loved it as much as he did because uh, we were obviously not you know, paying uh, studio kinds of rates to get any of these people. So uh, they truly did it for the same reason that we did, as a labor of love, out of passion, and for the script and for the story, and for, I think, this kind of filmmaking. Um, you mentioned the secondary market of Russia. How did that come about? That's not a, something that would immediately come to mind as a, as a secondary c uh, cultural connection. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Well, there are a lot of connections between, the, between let's say, there are a lot of connections along the way with this rabbit hole in Russia. There are a lot of things about marketing that are very disturbing and very, uh, um, uh, let's say, about the world we live in today that are not what you'd expect, that have their derivation and their origin in the Soviet Union. Uh, there are a lot of ways in which Russia continues to have a huge influence over our lives today. Uh, so the story, let's say, has a lot to do in that respect with, uh, with Russia. Interesting. Now, we before we started the actual interview, you told me that you had spent quite a bit of time there. And yes. No. I. I, I do. I, I. I. I have lived there for years. I speak fluent Russian, and my my wife and uh, my wife and child are, 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 are my wife is Russian, and my, my, my son's a dual citizen. So I, uh, I I love Russia. My filmmaking partner, with whom we literally conceived this whole thing together, is is, is Russian and. Uh, the script was essentially written half Russian, half English, sort of as a mix mash. I would write in broken Russian sometimes, he would write <laughs> in broken English, we would trade these things back and forth. I think part of the thrill on some level sometimes was writing in the foreign language for each one of us. So we would, you know, go back and forth that way with it. But I, I love the place. I, I frankly am a, uh, am a Russophile on some level. And, and go there as much as I possibly can because it's just a it's a unique fresh place that's still finding its voice and finding its form and there's some things there that and some, some ways of interacting with different kinds of people and different kinds of uh, social strata that, that I think are, are kind of lost here these days uh, so very good um, last question when it's released in September, I, September it's coming out. September seventh in theaters everywhere. And it'll be in theaters everywhere. It won't be like the you know in the art house. It'll be more more like. In no, no. As I say, one of the great TV. things about roadside attractions is that they're actually doing these kind of great you know more or less mainstream or crossover kinds of releases for films that are, that, are, that are you know going after. Uh, smart, good audiences that want to see entertaining movies that aren't necessarily the art house kinds of films in regular movie theaters and malls and whatnot. That's what we'll play in all these big markets uh, all over uh, the country, September 7th. Wow. Thank you very, very much. Thank and, you very uh, much. I really appreciate your time. Likewise. Good luck. Take care. Um, I appreciate it. Thank thanks. you.